Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss about bubble sort. So bubble sort is a sorting algorithm which sorts a list by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements if they are in the wrong order. So it's a comparison based sorting algorithm like insertion sort and selection sort. The way it swaps is by swapping the adjacent elements. Let's take this example. So we are given this input array. So bubble sort works in iterations. In the first iteration, it will swap all the adjacent elements if they are in the wrong order. So let's compare first two elements. So 3 and 15. So 3 is less than 15 and we are taking increasing order here. So these two elements are in the correct order. Then we compare 15 and 6. So 6 is less than 15. So we need to swap them. So these will be swapped. So 3, 6 and 15. 15 will come instead of 6. Now we'll swap 15 and 11. Because 11 is less than 15. So 11 should come first. So we'll have 3, 6, 11 and 15 will come instead of 11. Then we'll compare 15 and 12. So 12 is less than 15. So we'll again need to swap them. So 12 will come here and 15 will come in place of 12. Then we'll compare 15 and 2. So 2 is less than 15. So these will be swapped. So 2 will come here and 15 will come here. Then we'll compare 15 and 1. So 1 is less than 15. So 15 should come later. So we'll swap these. Then we'll compare 15 and 4. So again 4 is smaller. So 4 should come first. So we'll swap them. So 4 will come here and 15 will come in place of 4. Then we'll compare 15 and 6. So 6 is smaller, so 6 will come before and 15 will come at the end. So after the first round, the array values are 3, 6, 11, 12, 2, 1, 4, 6 and 15. So the largest value in the array has reached its right position. So 15 is the largest, so 15 has reached the end. So this was after the first round. In the second round, we will again compare all the elements from the start and swap if they are in the wrong order. So for the second round, we will again start comparing the adjacent elements from the starting. So we will compare 3 and 6. So these are in the right order. So nothing needs to be done. Then we will compare 6 and 11. So these are also in the right order. Then we will compare 11 and 12. So these are in the right order. Then we will compare 12 and 2. So these will be swapped. So 2 will come here and 12 will come instead of 2. Then we will compare 12 and 1. So these again will be swapped because 1 is smaller. So 1 and 12 will be swapped. Then we will compare 12 and 4. So 4 will come here and 12 will come instead of 4. Then we will compare 12 and 6. So again 6 will come before 12 and 12 will come in place of 6. So after the second round, the values in the array are 3, 6, 11, 2, 1, 4, 6, 12, 15. So in each iteration, we are putting the largest element at the end. So in the first iteration, we put 12 in the end. In the second iteration, we put 12 in the end. So this was in the second round. So like this, we have to do many rounds, which will be equal to the number of elements in the array. And in each round, we'll put the largest element at the end. So that is how the array will be sorted. The name bubble comes from the fact that we are comparing adjacent elements. So when we compare adjacent elements, we sort of form a bubble. So that is why this name bubble sort comes. So the algorithm is pretty simple. We just compare the adjacent elements and swap them if they are in the wrong order. So after each round, the largest element comes at the end. So once we understood the concept, let's see the pseudocode for this bubble sort. So we'll run a for loop which starts from i equal to 0 till size of the array. So size of this array is 9. Then we have an inner for loop which we run from j equal to 0 to array size minus i minus 1. So why we are doing this is because in each iteration of the bubble sort, we'll put the largest element at the end. So since we have already put the largest element at the end, so for the next iteration, we do not have to consider those largest elements. 
so the inner loop limit we reduce by i minus 1 so if we do a dry run so for the first case i equal to 0 and j equal to 0 so we compare array 0 with array 1 so we are comparing 3 and 15 so array 0 is not greater than array 1 so we do not do anything in this case then j is incremented so j becomes 1 so we compare array 1 and array 2 so if array 1 is greater than array 2 then we swap so these two will be swapped so 6 will come here and 15 will come here now in the next iteration j will be incremented to 2 then we'll compare array 2 with array 3 so we are comparing 15 with 11 so again 11 is smaller so we'll swap these so instead of 15 11 will come and instead of 11 15 will come then in the next iteration j is incremented to 3 now we compare array 3 with array 4 12 is smaller than 15 so again these will be swapped so 15 will come here and 12 will come here in the next iteration j is 4 so now we compare array 4 with array 5 so these will be swapped so 15 will come here and 2 will come here in the next iteration j will be 5 so we'll compare array 5 with array 6 so these will be swapped so 15 will come here and 1 will come here in the next iteration j is incremented to 6 so we'll compare 15 and 4 so 4 will come here and 15 will come here in the next iteration j will be 7 so we'll compare array 7 with array 8 so these will be swapped so 15 will come here and 6 will come here so after the first iteration this is the array state so we have 3 6 11 12 2 1 4 6 and 15 so now in the next iteration i becomes equal to 1 and now we are in this inner for loop from j equal to 0 to array size which is 9 minus i1 minus 1 so we'll we have to run it till 7 so you can see here we removed the last index which was array 8 from this inner loop because we have already placed the highest element 15 at the correct position so we do not need to consider this 15 again so that is why we reduce the inner loop by i minus 1 so now in the second iteration we compare array j with array j plus 1 so we are comparing 3 and 6 so these are in the right order so nothing needs to be swapped then we compare 6 and 11 so these are also in the right order then we compare 11 and 12 so these are also in the right order then we compare 12 and 2 so these will be swapped so 2 will come here and 12 will come here in the next iteration we'll compare 12 and 1 so these will be swapped because these are not in the right order so 12 will come instead of 1 and 1 will come instead of 12 then we'll compare 12 and 4 so these so these are not in the right order so these will be swapped then we'll compare 12 and 6 so these are also not in the right order so these will be swapped so after the second iteration the array state is this so now we have placed 12 also in the right position so for the next iteration now i becomes 2 and now we run this inner for loop from j equal to 0 till array size which is 9 i is 2 minus 1 so we run it till sixth index so we are leaving the last two indices because those are already in the right order so we'll again start comparing from the starting so we'll compare the first two adjacent elements so these so these are in the right order then we compare 6 and 11 so these are also in the right order then we compare 11 and 2 so these are not in the right order so these will be swapped so 2 will come here and 11 will come here then we'll compare 11 and 1 so these are not in the right order so these will be swapped then in the next iteration we'll compare 11 and 4 so these are not in the right order so these will be swapped then we'll compare 11 and 6 so these are not in the right order so these will be swapped so now after the third round we have placed 11 also in the right position so after this point the array state is so we can see here now that the last three elements so these are in the right order so we just have to compare now the initial six elements so for the next iteration now i is 3 
So the inner for loop is run from 0 to 5th index. So we compare the first two elements 3 and 6. So these are in the right order. Then we compare 6 and 2. So these will be swapped. Then we'll compare 6 and 1. So these will again be swapped. Then we'll compare 6 and 4. So these will be swapped. And then we'll compare 6 and 6. So these are in the right order. So nothing needs to be done. So after this step, the array state is. So now i becomes 4 and we run the inner loop from 0 till 4. So the last four elements are in the correct position. Now we just need to compare the first five elements. So in the first iteration, we'll compare 3 and 2. So these will be swapped. 2 will come at the starting and 3 will come instead of 2. Then we'll compare 3 and 1. So these again will be swapped. Then we'll compare 3 and 4. So these are in the right order. Then 4 and 6. These are also in the right order. So in the next iteration, the array that we have is. So now i is 5 and we run the inner loop from j equal to 0 till 3. So we just need to compare the first four elements. So we compare 2 and 1. So these will be swapped. Then we compare 2 and 3. So these are in the right order. Then we compare 3 and 4. So these are in the right order. So nothing needs to be done. So after this, the array state is. So we can see here that the array is already sorted. But for bubble sort to know that the array is already sorted, there needs to be one iteration in which there is no swap. So when we come across a situation when there is no swap in an iteration, that means all the elements are in the correct position. So in that case, we can break the loop and return the array that the array is already sorted. So for example, if the input array that we are given is already sorted, so let's say the array that we are given is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we run by the default bubble sort algorithm, then we have to run all the loops each time. So we'll have the outer loop will run five times and the inner loop will also run those many times. But what we can do is we can just check if in inner iteration was there any swap done. If there is no swap done, that means the array is already sorted and we can break it. So by that manner, we can reduce the complexity of bubble sort in some situations when the array is already sorted. So we do not need to go till the end of the algorithm. We can break in between. So now in this situation, you have seen that the array is already sorted, but, but we'll need to confirm by doing one more iteration that the array is sorted. If in the inner for loop, there is no swap done, that means the array is sorted. So just compare the adjacent elements. And in each iteration, the largest element will be placed at the end. So, so in each iteration, we are reducing the scope of the array and doing the same steps. So the array size keeps on reducing and the array starts getting sorted from the end. Now, once you've understood the algorithm of bubble sort, let's look at the few important properties of the algorithm. So the time complexity of bubble sort is order of n in best case and order of n square in average and worst case. So the average and worst case that we have already seen, the best case comes when the array is already sorted. So to handle the best case, we need to do some optimization that if there are no swaps done in an iteration, then we can break it. So that helps us in achieving the best case time complexity. Because otherwise, if we keep on running the algorithm, if the array is already sorted, we'll end up in order of n square. To attain the best case complexity, we can check that whether any swap was done in this iteration. If there are no swaps done, that means the array is already sorted. So we can return and no need to proceed with the algorithm. So that is how we handle the best case in bubble sort. So this is an in-place algorithm, means it does not require any extra space. So the space complexity is order of one. Bubble sort is a stable algorithm. It doesn't change the relative order of elements with equal keys. So because in this situation also in this input array, we have two elements which have the same keys. But when we start comparing the adjacent elements, when we reach the situation where there are two elements adjacent which have the equal values, we do not swap them. So the relative order of the elements with equal keys is maintained. So that makes this algorithm a stable algorithm. And this algorithm is not online, which that means if we have a stream of 
elements that are coming in we cannot use the bubble sort to sort it because in each iteration of the bubble sort we are reducing the scope of the array because we have placed one element at the end so it needs to know beforehand that which is the largest element so if we are receiving a continuous stream of elements then we cannot apply the bubble sort to sort it so that makes this algorithm as not online so these were the important properties of bubble sort now once you have understood these let's look at the implementation all the source code that i'll be showing is available in my github repository link of which is present here and as well as in the description now let's have a look at the code so in the main function i have this input vector i pass this vector to the bubble sort function in this bubble sort function i first run a outer for loop till the size of the array then i have this inner for loop which i run till array size minus i minus 1 I compare the adjacent elements and if they are not in the right order I swap them. I've also kept a variable here is swapped so that will be set to true if there is any swap done in this inner for loop. So once the inner for loop ends I check this is swap variable. If this variable is false which means there was no swap done in this iteration that means the array is already sorted so we can break this for loop. So what this does is it helps to reduce the time complexity in the best case scenario when the array is already sorted. So in the scenarios when the array is sorted we do not need to proceed with the algorithm we can just break here. And then in the main function I print the array. Now let's see the output of this program. So the input array was given and then the array is sorted using the bubble sort. So that was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions please leave in the comment section below. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.